Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today's lesson is on iguanas and we're going to be making a imaginary iguana. Now if you want to turn it into a chameleon you can. If you want to make it a lizard you can. Uh, if you want to invent your own species you can. But first I want you to follow my processes and procedures and then you can change it up and make it anything you want. You know you can add spikes to the tail, claws, a little fang, whatever you want. Bumps on its nose, but that's after. But first off, I'm gonna teach you how to make the basic body shapes, and then I'm gonna show you uh, a, how to add some pattern and texture and interest to your picture, and then you're on your own to create your own design. I did this lesson with second grade students. Um, they were about seven and eight years old, and I and they did a variety of different color choices in my classroom the kids pick whatever they want to, to use for colors and this second grade student chose to do a background of pink uh, so it's up to you what color you want to start with but the letter that we're going to start with here's a second grade example here is going to be the lowercase letter E and that's the first drawing that we're going to put on our paper Here's another student example here. And you can see the lowercase letter E. And then this student chose to curl the tail around and around. Here's another base color, which is a light purple example. And at the end of the video, I'll do a little, uh, little mini art show of some of the examples that I have. So if you wanna see more student examples, uh, just look uh, to the end of the video. But I'm going to get started on the lesson today. The lesson, like I said, the first thing we're going to be doing is making a giant letter E just to get our base um, sketch down. And then we can change it up if we want a longer nose or if we want a higher back. And then we can add in the, the legs and things. If we want a curlier tail, then we can adjust this letter E. But this just helps with composition and getting our lizard to fill that entire page. So this is the first line we're going to be making. And if you look, this, this line here of the lowercase e is in the center of my page. So that's what we're going to be finding first, is the middle of our page. And we're going to go right to direct paint. That's how I like to work with the students is right in, I'm going to do a purple lizard today. I'm going to find the center and I'm doing it right in with my brush. I use my brush as a drawing tool. I hold my fingers close to the edge. I rest my finger on my wrists on the paper and my brush should be upright just like a soldier. Now if it's completely upright I have full control of that brush and I can just by resting my wrist on the paper, I can just barely touch that paper with my tip of my brush so I get a skinny line. I'll show you on this here. If I press really lightly, I get a skinny line. Let's see if I rest it. And if I press hard, I get a thicker line. For the drawing, you want to have it a pretty thin line as a, as a base. And then you can change up these, but practice getting some skinny lines because we're going to be needing some good brush control when we do thin lines here. So it's good to practice uh, as we're sketching out. So I'm going to go ahead. Now you want to make sure that you leave space, negative space on each end because you need to have room. Let me show you on this red example of a student, second grade. You want to have room. Make sure you have plenty of room for the lizard's nose to come out from that center line and then some of this background space here. And then of course you need plenty of room for the back end of the tail. You don't want this to be too close to the edge of that page. So I'm going to come over and this is a guideline. Remember leave some room here so slowly come over this way and slowly come over to the left. The lizard is the main subject so it's taking up most of the room but be conscious of your page endings. Then I'm going to come up to form my letter E and then I'm going to put a guideline. So this is how thick the lizard is going to be at this stage. So I'm going to come on up, curve down, and it's more of an elongated leather, letter E. If I want to make it fatter later, I can. And this is basically a rainbow arch, curve over, rainbow arch to form the letter E. Then I'm going to drop down 
and this is where I'm gonna fo follow the, the base and come around to form the tail, okay? Now at this point, come on down, around. Now make sure you're not at the bottom and going right off that page. Now if you want to curve your tail out, you can. If you wanna do spiraling, you can. Sometimes these lizards, and cham especially chameleons, they have the longer curling tail. Lizards would have more of a shorter tail. So I'm just gonna give some more curl to my chameleon. I wanna really exaggerate that fancy tail. So then I'm coming down and around. Now for the tail, I want to leave where the tail ends very skinny, it's like tapered. So once I have the base of that E, now I can change up the shape of the lizard or chameleon, whatever I'm gonna be making. I'm gonna fix, see how this is a little lot thinner here? It's not the same. I'm just gonna fix that shape right now by adding more paint to it. And I'm gonna fill in the center of my E. I'm doing nice strokes in the same direction so I have even coverage in my back, uh, in, the, the, in the base coat of the lizard's body. And this forms the actual lizard's body. Now I can adjust, if I want to, the little nose of the lizard. See how I made a little nose bump out here? And this student has a little bit of a bump out. This student's nose is more pointy. Here's, a, here's one that has a lower point to it. Here is a rounded point here coming down. So you can adjust the little nose. So I'm gonna come out here for adjusting mine. And then I'm just gonna kinda connect together. Draw around. I'm gonna turn it this way to get better coverage. And I'm gonna make a little bit of a bump here coming up into the head. So I'm adjusting here. Now if you wanna make a big bump up I'm gonna make a bump up here. I'll, I'll exaggerate this, bump up and back. This will be where the eye bump is on mine. So I just made a little bump up and went to the nose. Kinda of looks like a mouse shape right now. Now where the tail meets, this is almost forming a right angle. We don't want that. We want this to be rounded. And the tail is very thin at this point. I want the tail, the thinnest part of the tail to be near the tip, and then it's gonna gradually taper and get thicker. It'll taper off to a very thin point here, and then it'll gradually get a little bit thicker and thicker. So look, if I bring another brush stroke, the wide brush stroke down here, and then taper it in. And so I bring my brush stroke wider so it's another wide brush stroke. Now at this point, I need to get it a little bit thicker. So here's my wide brush stroke where it meets the body and come over another brush stroke. So now I can see this is thicker here because it gradually goes from thick to thin. And take your time as you make your shape of the lizard. You know, that's important. Now I'm gonna just kind of curve it right into the body and smooth this out. Now for the little legs, you don't want your legs coming off of the nose area. And if this is my exaggerated large bump out for the eye, I don't want them coming right under the eye either. So probably right before you end the eye, right before the beginning of this eye shape here. So I'm gonna bring just a little line down and it'll meet the tail because my tail's in the way. If your tail's not in the way, you can paint a letter, little letter L. Go down and over. I'll show you on the back end. I'm just gonna go down and over a bit. Now if you wanna put some little toes in, you can. Because we're gonna put a branch here. So if you wanna paint in a, a toe or two. my toes are hidden behind this tail. And the feet aren't the most important part of all this lizard anyways. It's the shape of this lizard or chameleon. There, so we can just hide them with branches and, and leaves. Now, once we have that done, we're gonna let that base coat dry. And then we'll work on uh, putting in some of the branches. And you can do the branches while the base coat is drying. I'm just gonna wipe off 
uh, my brush here and go into some brown. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you on my example here. The branch is going to go behind the lizard. You don't want it to be um, on top of the tail or on top of the feet. So we're going to very carefully paint. I'll show you what this student did. Very carefully, you start off at the edge, and then you come over to the edge of your page, and then you go in between all of these spaces. So I'm going to tip my paper this way, and I'm going to start at the, at the tail area, and I'm going to go to the edge of my page. And see how I kind of dab right next to the purple lizard? And then pull the branch over to the edge of your page. Now using the tip of the brush, I'm going to do an imaginary line behind my tail, connect to my toe. And then I'm going to go imaginary, connect. Have almost no, look at that, almost no paint is on my brush here. Just a little bit. If I put too big of a blob, I won't have full control. This is only a little space that I need to paint. Then I'm going to come over, continue over, and filling in this little area. Just really careful. Take the time on this part. And then I can have my branch be a little crooked. You never want it to be perfectly straight. Be very careful as the two colors meet. And then smooth this out here. Now, if you have time, this is about one day in class. If you have time, then I always have the kids go and add some more branches. Now, he's crawling in the trees. And so if you think about trees, there's branches coming down. If you're on one branch of a tree, there's branches above you. And you start off by making a line and then taper it as the line gets farther away, it gets thicker or as the line gets back to the tree, it gets thicker. These are the end tips of the branches. Now, I always tell the kids make a, a V or a Y shape for your branches. And then you can branch down and continue branching. Make a Y or a V off of that. There. And the tip should be thin, and as it comes back to the branch, it gets, it tapers and gets thicker. So taper is going from very skinny to thick or thick to thin. Make another branch. Now, the next step, and this is for my kids, it's the next day. We go ahead and we paint in some leaves. And to do the leaves, I press into my green now you can hand draw or hand paint in an entire leaf shape like this. And I'll show you how to do a leaf. I'm just turning it this way. I usually draw a straight line. And then I tell the kids to make a little bump here and a little bump here. And then you can connect it. And this is a, a more pointed, almost um, kind of eye shape leaf a long, narrow, pointed leaf. Or the smaller leaves that are really far away, you can just take your brush and print the leaves. Whoops, this is kind of thick paint today. Just print the leaves just by pressing, press. And notice the leaves don't even have to touch the branches. And the brush pretty much does all the work for you. Now, I, I never stop with just one color of leaves or one value. I add different values of green, lighter greens and darker greens. Darker greens are the shades of green, and lighter greens are the tints of green. And also, you can add some gorgeous yellow greens because that's one of my favorite colors. Love the yellow greens, but I'm just printing. So that's how you can print some of those uh, leaves. To finish off the lizard, you can go ahead and paint in the eyeball circle and exaggerate it because you want to be able to see it from a distance. And you want it to be able to show up. If you do it really, really small, you won't be able to see it. Put some detail, you'll be able to put some detail in. So I'm gonna give a base coat of this 
right now. And then I, I, it's best to let that eyeball dry. Let me show you on one that's dry over here. Once the eyeball is dry with a base color, then you can come on in and do your detail. I'm going to give a ring of lime or, or dark green. And then in the center, I'm going to place a black pupil. And if you want to leave a little light reflection, you can. Or you can put the light reflection in after. Now, once you have the eye done, let me show you on here how I do my mouth. I start off at the edge. And if you want to practice with a lighter color first, before you do a darker value, you can, like I did with the green. Come in on the edge, I come down a hair, and then I paint over and practice. Now this is toward the end after you've done everything. And you've practiced using that brush really thin. You want to be able to get thin, beautiful lines. Come over for the mouth, and then you can either curve it down, I just give it a little bump. You don't want it to be a huge smiley face. And then if you want to add a little bit of a vent nostril, you can in here. Now when you add your patterning, now you want to think about the lizard's patterns. What kind of patterns and designs are you going to put on your lizard? And I'll just go into my purple here and show you. You can say if you want to do stripes, the lizard, the entire lizard then, would have to have the same patterning. This one's not finished here. And this student here has not finished doing all the patterning either, but you can see how the stripes, the first step is starting, the purple stripes, but the whole body is finished with the same purple stripe pattern. Then they went back and added the dots. Then the student will finish now the dots throughout the whole tail and that's to have unity. Once you start one type of a pattern, you want that lizard's body to have the whole pattern throughout the whole lizard. Now you don't have to um, have the stripes coming through the whole body. That's up to you how you design your lizard stripes. Here's some that have zigzags. You can use the back end of your brush. I'll show you how I paint my stripes. I start from the top, I come down, and then I make it a little bit thicker, and then I taper it to a skinny point. This is kind of like a tiger stripe. And then I can do the same from the bottom, bottom on up, but that's up to you how you want to do your stripes. Some kids don't even want to put stripes. Some kids want to just put dots. Let me show you some. If I want to have just some nice pressed pattern, maybe I want polka dots. And another way of making, now the whole lizard would have pattern, or maybe I don't want polka dots on the top. Maybe it's just the underside of the lizard that's gonna have these purple polka dots. So I would continue my pattern throughout the underside of the whole lizard. And then its tail, it kind of tapers to smaller. Give him some pattern over here. And then, Maybe up at the top, he just has some kind of rough, narrow, narrow stripes, very painterly. Now another way to add some cool pattern is using the back of that brush. I can press into my paint, just give a little bit of paint on the tip, and I can put tiny dots with the back end of my brush. And that's how the students did the patterning here with the back end of the brush. Now, once you've finished your lizard, and you can see how this student just didn't even, didn't put the lizard foot in in the front. And that's fine, because the tail hides most of it. And you can even hide some of the this area if it's so small to work in with some leaves. Now, once you've finished your lizard, go ahead and make it your own. You know, if you want to put, um, some of these horns on the top. If you want to put some more reptiles in the um, background, this student put in, let me show you up close, a snake and did some detail in the patterning.
Just take your time and be real careful as you're doing this. Now, if you want to put creatures, butterflies, insects, whatever you want, a, t a lizard tongue with some insects and bugs all over the leaves, do that. Uh, put in a few leaves, get your sticks done, and then put in your reptiles and, and bugs and things, and then add your more leaves around, more foliage. If you start and add too much foliage, and if you want to add the, the more reptiles to the background, then you won't have room if there's too much foliage. But this student did a little bit of foliage, then added some, some of uh, the snakes, and then she'll go back now and add more uh, leaf values. But that's how we create our chameleons. And I'm going to show you a few. Um, I think I showed you most of the examples I have here. Um, remember, you're thinking about what colors do you like in your chameleon. Now, you might want lime green, but you might want to say you have pink pattern. Let's see if I have. Here's some more pink ones. Here's a pink one. Another lime. Oops. Another lime green one. And here's a pink one. Now you can also put in, like this student did from second grade, uh, some leaves. And there's her butterflies. And then this one has a lot of different values in the leaves. Right in here. And I hope you enjoy your patterned lizard.